Hello everyone. Welcome to the BH loop of a ring specimen of iron practical of the theory of electricity module of semester 2. Let's get started with the objective and the theory part in order to understand the practical. The objective of this practical is to determine the BH loop for a ring specimen of iron. In this practical, we will apply a magnetic force to a ring specimen of iron and we will be plotting the magnetic flux density against the magnetic force. BH curve is the graph of magnetic flux density B versus magnetic force H. BH curve or the hysteresis curve helps to compare magnetic properties of materials and it is being used to select suitable materials for different purposes like core of transformer or generator, electromagnets and permanent magnets. The choice is made on the basis of properties like retentivity, coercivity, energy loss which we will be learning in the coming up slides. Now we will learn more about the hysteresis graph. In this practical, when there is no current running in the solenoid, there will be no magnetic field applied across a ferromagnet like iron. If we increase the current and when this ferromagnet is exposed to a magnetic field, the magnetic domains in the ferromagnet tend to align in the direction of the magnetic field. As we make the magnetic field stronger, more and more domains will get lined up. Eventually, all the domains will get aligned with the increment in the applied magnetic field. And it will come to a saturation point where further increment in the applied magnetic field will not make any change in the magnetic field inside the ferromagnet, which is shown by point A. When the magnitude of the magnetic field start decreasing, the domains tend to stay aligned which means even when the applied magnetic field is zero, there will be a retaining magnetism. This retentivity point is shown by point B. If we start increasing the magnetic field in the opposite direction, now it will force the domains to flip in this direction. When we continuously increase the magnetic field in the leftward direction, there will be a point where only half of the domains are now flipped back and therefore magnetic field inside the ferromagnet is zero. This is known as coercivity which is shown by point C. If we start making the applied magnetic field even stronger, more and more domains will be lined up in the leftward direction and then it will come to a saturation point in the opposite direction as shown by point D. Then we will start decreasing the applied magnetic force which has been applied in the leftward direction now and the domains will start flipping back at the rightward direction. When the applied magnetic field is zero, we can see that not all the domains have been flipped back. Therefore, again, there will be a retention as shown by point E. And then we start applying a magnetic field in the rightward direction again, and there will be a point where half of the domains are now flipped in the rightward direction. Therefore, magnetic field inside the ferromagnet is again zero and that is shown by point F. If we make the magnetic field even stronger, all the domains will be turned to the right where we come to the saturation point all the way back. Now we will derive an equation for the hysteresis loss. Taking the work done per cycle is W, it is obvious that the integration of dW, which is the small change of work, gives the total amount of work. dW is the product between the ampere turns and change of flux. Therefore, the following equation can be derived. This leads to the work done during one complete cycle is volume into area of the loop. Therefore, 
we can say that the work done per unit volume is equal to the area of the loop. Here's the apparatus. Referring to the figure, since the magnetizing force H is proportional to the ampere turns, the voltage across the 57 ohm resistor is proportional to H and is applied across the X plates of the oscilloscope. The potential difference across the capacitor is proportional to the instantaneous flux and hence to the flux density B, which is applied across Y plates of the oscilloscope. Let's derive an equation for the voltage across the capacitor. Starting from the equation for the secondary induced EMF, we can derive an equation for the current through the capacitor as shown in equation 1. Hence, the voltage across the capacitor can be derived as this. Voltages across X and Y plates can be derived from these two equations as shown here. Let's consider alpha as the X deflection sensitivity and beta as the Y deflection sensitivity in where alpha equals to 1 over X axis scale factor and similarly beta equals to the 1 over Y axis scale factor. Carefully observe the derivation of mu1 and mu2 here. Hence, we can say that hysteresis loss is equal to the area of the loop divided by mu1 into mu2. Now let's have a look at the practical setup. As shown in the circuit diagram also, for this practical, we need a ring iron specimen, a 57 ohm resistor, a 20 kilo ohm resistor, a capacitor of 10 microfarad, an oscilloscope, and a single phase supply. Pause the practical video and observe the oscilloscope measurements carefully. Take down the y-axis scale factor and x-axis scale factor and then trace down the pH loop to a graph sheet using a proper scale. Calculate the work done per cycle and hysteresis loss per cycle in the specimen you used. Use the following specifications for the ring specimen. In the discussion part, answer the following questions. Hope you understood the practical. Thank you. Have a great day.